one problem I always see is they have that light pushed right up against the side and the side of the baby is lit. Don't light the side of the baby. We're not trying to achieve split lighting. Light the front of the baby. Draw your eye to the baby's face, not behind it. If you're struggling to achieve beautiful, soft light when photographing babies in props, then you should watch this tutorial. I'm gonna break it down for you. I've got a very large soft box. I'm gonna show you what not to do, and then I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how you can achieve awesome results every single time. So make sure you are subscribed to my channel and you click on that little bell so you get notifications every time I upload a new video. All right, so Garrett's gonna show you a pullback here because it's I'm already set up. I've got my strobe turned on, ready to rock and roll. I've got my fake baby in a prop. We don't have a real baby, but we, do, we will have lots of real babies coming with KBO, which is very, very exciting. I've got my camera on a tripod, and the reason that I'm doing that today and only for today's shoot, I don't shoot with my camera on a tripod when I am photographing a real baby, purely because I love to move around and change my camera angles to try and get as much variety as I possibly can. But for the purpose of showing you a lighting demonstration today, uh, my camera is locked off and it's not going to move and I'm tethered. So that means you're gonna be able to see the shots that come out of my camera. And what we're gonna look for today in terms of that direction of light, intensity of light, and what not to do, what to look for to get really good results. So yeah, like I said, if you've got questions about lighting, pop them into the comments. Garrett's gonna keep an eye on those and uh, he is going to let me know if you've got any while I'm focused over here. So um, if you've got any questions about my camera gear in terms of you know my settings and all of that, I'll talk a little bit about that, but um, today it's more about that direction um, and that control of your light and what to look for. So one of the things that is really important, like I just said before, when it comes to getting that beautiful light across a baby's face, is how you pose a baby in a prop. So there's lots of different shaped props. Um, I've got like just my, my favorite bowl here. You can see it's quite deep. So I've got to put enough support in under the baby to lift the baby up. Now, ultimately, when I am lighting a baby, I want the light to fall across the face. The face is the most important part. I'm always, tip number one, gonna have the baby's head closest to that light source. You've probably heard me say that many, many times. But when you look at a photograph, you wanna be drawn in to you know that main focal point. And for me, that's that beautiful baby's face. Um, and as you can see, my baby is very, very beautiful. Um, so when it comes to light, I'm not gonna have the feet towards the light source. I want that light to come on a diagonal from the brow, the you know where the head is closest to the light, the brow across the face to get some beautiful soft shadows. Now, when you're looking at hard shadows, they can be really hard to fix in post-production. So this is why we've got to get that light right in camera. Um, when you're posing a baby in a prop like this, making sure that the upper half of the baby is elevated so that the bottom is lower, so the baby's bottom, um, will allow you to get that beautiful light across the face. If the bottom is higher than the head or the baby is sitting flat within a surf in a prop like this, the light is going to come across all of the baby. So it's going to be quite sort of flat. If it's too low, the light's going to hit the side of the prop and it's going to create some shadows from the prop, which we've also got to be really careful of as well. So to get beautiful soft light across the baby's face, get that baby's upper half elevated so that the prop isn't going to cast any shadows and so that the baby comes up towards that light source. The other thing you've got to um, think about is trying to create that light to come from the brow across to the other opposite cheek is making sure that you are turning the baby's chin towards the light to get that, you know, that beautiful direction of light. Because Sometimes, you know, moving your lights in the studio isn't always easy. And if you're working with natural light, it's not like you can move that window. So you pose towards the, um, the light source. 
The other thing that you've got to think about is um, making sure that you don't turn that chin too far towards that light because then the light is going to come from underneath and it's going to hit underneath the you know the baby's nostrils and you're going to highlight areas that you really don't want to draw attention to. All right so when we look at getting that direction of light right the easiest way to do that is to look for the shadows. So you want to create some beautiful soft shadows that fall just below the nose. It's not always easy to do I know but when you know what to look for you will start to really improve uh, the way that you create beautiful soft light when lighting babies in props. Alrighty, I can see people commenting, can you do a speed light demonstration? Well, I don't use speed lights. I do have one that I used many, many moons ago for weddings. Um, I'm not even sure if it still works, but um, they can be used to create beautiful light. You've just got to make sure that when you are using a speed light, you're not using it on top of your camera. You want to create, um, you know, the, the right sort of, um, I suppose, placement of light by putting it on a tripod and then diffusing it some way, either bouncing it off a reflector back into where you want to light the, the subject or by you know getting one of those uh, speed light sort of modifier softbox and using that as well. But ultimately, it's the same. Now, my light that I've currently got on my tripod right now, it's an 800 watt light. So it's a very, very strong, strong light. Most newborn photographers tend to use 100 watt, 200 watt lights. So the output, that wattage, is going to be a lot less than what I'm currently dealing with. So in terms of settings, what I've currently got my light set to is not going to work with for you if you don't have an 800 watt. Garrett's telling me to look at this camera. All right, 800 watt light. If I'm shooting this at its lowest setting um, and, and placing my light where it is, that's not going to work with for you if you're shooting with a 100 watt light. So I'm going to try and break it down as easily as I, I can, but this is where you have to know your light and you've got to play with it just like I am right now live with you. And it's all about just understanding it and you're just going to be able to put that light exactly where you want it. So one of the biggest problems that I see when people are using strobe is they tend to create this straight wall of light. And if I turn my light around to show you, I'm coming this way so I don't move my camera because it's in the right position. Alrighty. So at the moment my camera's on my light's on a bit of an angle. But if I straighten this. Okay. And I have it flat to the ground. This light, this modifier is not going to go straight to the ground, but some people's lights do. If you have that, you know, straight down to the ground and, you know, coming out like a wall of light, it's going to look okay. It's not going to create ultimately the worst light you've ever seen. But unfortunately, when that light is coming in, when you've got that soft box low to the ground, when it comes in, it's going to light the side of the prop excuse me while I bend awkwardly, um, it's going to light the side of the prop and it's going to light the floor. That's going to draw your eye to those areas of the image. So what you want to do is lift your light up higher. When you lift your light up higher, then the light, a little bit of light will spill onto the floor, but it won't be so, you know, won't be as much as it you know, normally would be. But what you want to do is create a beautiful, uh, wave of light that's going to fall across the top of the baby and you need to elevate that light to do it. Another problem that I often see is that the light will be angled directly down like this. Now when we do that we've got all of that light coming straight down onto our baby. So I'm going to take a shot and show you. And right now that light is not in the right position, but what we're going to do is we're going to start bad and then we're going to fix it. Just to very quickly before I take the shot, my camera settings, um, I'm shooting at 100 ISO. I'm at f2, um, obviously, because that's what my lens allows me to go to. And I love shooting with a really 
um, you know, beautiful depth of field, and I'm at two hundredth of a second. And my light is currently at um, its lowest setting, which is two. For the sake of showing you how intense this light's going to be, let's bring it up to three. Let's bring it up another stop. And we'll take a shot. So you're going to see that shot. All right. I mean, it's really not that bad, but. <laughs> um, okay, it's really quite bright and there's a lot of light falling all over the ground. Now, I know in post-production I could... Um, you know, darken the, the area of the floor that's closest to the, um, the right-hand side of the frame. The baby's leg and arm are just as bright as the baby's face. And you'll notice that the top of the baby's head is really quite bright. And that's because the full intensity of light is falling down directly onto the top of that baby's head. It's not, like I said, overly bad but I'm going to show you how you can improve it from here on. All right, so because that light is coming straight down onto the baby at that 45 degree angle, and we always say 45 degree angle, um, the full intensity of light is coming out. We don't want the full intensity of light. We want to create a beautiful soft light because as you can see in that photo, whilst it looks nice, the baby's arm is so bright, the baby's foot is so bright that they're competing for attention. You might not see it, I see it because, you know, I've been looking at images for 17 years and I've been judging photography competitions for, oh gosh, 10 years. So I've learned what to look for when it comes to using light to create mood, to, to draw the viewer's eye in, to improve your composition, all of those things. So what I like to do when I am shooting a prop like this is... Straighten that light up a little more. I want to angle it just a little bit, not too much. And then what I'm going to do is lift that light up a bit. So now the full intensity of light is actually going to come, if you look at the direction of that light, in this direction. So it's not coming straight down towards the baby. And what I want to do is get the, the light that comes off the edge of the soft box because at the moment the strobe is, um, is pointing towards my white brolly on the inside and it's bouncing beautiful soft light. So the bigger the soft box, um, obviously the softer the light is going to be. So all of this light that's coming off the edge down here is what's going to fall across the baby. So if I bring that light closer, obviously it's going to be, you know, a little bit brighter. You've got a, you know, a different light. You might have to have your light a bit closer. That's okay. But with mine, I don't need to. The other thing was before when we look at, looked at our shot, the top of the baby's head here is really quite bright. So that's where I could either turn the baby or I could just position my light um, where I want it to be. So this is where I'm going to come around, get that leg right there. Oh, it's doing it again. <laughs> it's when I move it. Okay, temperamental. All righty, so now we're starting to direct the light this way. So it's not going to be um, falling behind the baby so much. Just move. Yeah, I'll just move my camera a bit. Here we go. And now let's take another shot. I'm not changing the intensity of light. All I've done is lifted it and I've um, angled it so that it's not going directly down onto the baby. So that means less light than our previous shot is falling on the baby now, if that makes sense. All right, how is that? So much better. Now, if I come over here, I can select both of these and we can have a little look. Is it the X or the Y, Garrett, there, that one? So you've got the one on the right is your before. 
Yep. So you can see how bright the top of that baby's head is and you can see um, the further cheek away from the light, God, get your words right, Kelly, um, the contrast in that face. So there's less light falling on the opposite side of the face. Whereas the second photo, now we've got a little bit more light falling onto the other side of the face and we've got a little bit of light coming onto that other arm. But when we are looking at directing that light, like we can do it better. And this is where, if you, you need to, you can get that light up a little higher. You can turn the baby's um, leg and arm further away from the light. You can reduce the amount of light. But every time I do this, what I'm looking at is the histogram. I'm looking at, am I overexposing any of those highlights? And you can see on the screen there that I'm not. I've got lots of room there, which means my skin tones are right because that information is right up there. And I've got lots of detail in my shadows. Now, if you want to create, um, you know, a moodier look, that's where you, you know, you can change that placement of light. And I've got to be careful here that I don't set it off again. But what I'm going to do is just lift it a little higher again. There we go, and straighten it up there. Oop. And that is just a little bit of static electricity coming through the, um, the strobe, which is triggering it. I think it's me. <laughs> okay, so I've lifted a little higher, and I'm going to bring it actually this way just a bit more. There we go. So now, the intensity of light is going to go straight, and I'm going to create just this bit of light that's falling off here to come across the baby's face. So again, I'm reducing the intensity of that light by lifting it higher and straightening it so that it goes um, more at a right angle across the top of the baby there. Now to go back to taking a shot. Uh, yep, there we go. Okay. All right, so let's have a now a look at that one and that one. And you're going to see really sort of small differences, but I've got less light coming onto my background now, and it's starting to, to get that beautiful softness. But this is where I want to bring the intensity of that light down. So I'll start to get the light right, and then I'll bring down to my lowest setting as we were before to really create that beautiful moody look. But when you're getting the light placement right, the best thing to do is have that light a bit brighter. So now, there we go. And if you wanted to um, bring that up a bit more, you could, but I love those, when I'm working with these beautiful earthy tones, I love creating a moodier look and, and getting it right. One thing you can do to create a darker um, area on your floor so you don't have so much light falling there is to put a black reflector in and that's going to suck some of that light away. Uh, if you want to fill some of those shadows because the intensity of your light is, is a bit much, you can bring in a reflector on the other side. But the more... Um, light that you add in there, the flatter it's going to be. So when you want to create more depth and, and density within your photo, you really do want those beautiful shadows. So, um, you know, you, you create that, that depth. When light's flat, it can be a little tricky. So if I had a real baby right now, my fake baby's head won't stay turned and won't turn further away. So if I had a real baby, I'd probably um, turn the baby a little bit more elevate that baby a bit more and bring that face a bit more around towards that light source and that's what we were saying before in terms of getting the position of that baby just right her hands don't even want to stay in the right place okay I've got a question for you 
I'm having fun here, sorry guys. <laughs> Just getting a little carried away. There we go. When you use um, strobe, should your room be on the darker side, Karen asks. Oh, How does question. that whole thing work with strobe? Because I, for a very long yeah. time, thought exactly the same thing. So which, which camera am I looking you at? you can um, explain for us. I will set. Well, if we do a wide angle. Let's go wide angle. So you can show everyone the room. The lights are on at the moment. Now, depending on your settings, you can actually cancel out all ambient light. The best way to do it, and I've done it in a tutorial before, um, I actually do it in my lighting tutorial, I believe, on newbornposing.com, is you turn your light off. So turn your strobe off and take a photo of your setup um, without any, you know, obviously without changing any of your camera settings in, in terms of right now I'm shooting at 100 ISO, F2 um, at 200th of a second. So take a photo um, without your strobe and then have a look at how much light is actually coming in. That's how much light will impact your exposure. So you can cancel that out. So what I like to do is get my camera um, settings and, and bring them down as low as I possibly can so that the ambient light isn't being um, recorded. If I was to take, there's probably a little bit of ambient light kind of going, going on here right now. Yeah, but for filming purposes, you'd be looking at me in a dark room if yeah. we turned all of that off. <laughs> it's my fault, I'm sorry. So I'm now going to turn that off and I'm going to take a shot. I'm going to show you how much ambient light is impacting my setup. So you can see how dark it is. So it's, it's not a lot of light really coming into this. And I've got the ceiling lights on, like there's a lot of light in here. We've blocked out the natural light because that's way too much light. <laughs> um, but now when I turn my light back on, and those camera settings are, actually, let's do this, change my aperture. Come up to say 3.5. Have a look at that one. Look at that. So we're letting let light, less light in. So now no ambient light is actually going to affect my image in terms of the amount of light that's coming off my strobe. So if we turn our strobe back on, So because I went up to 3.5, I'm letting less light in. So that's, that's the camera setting that I need to cancel out my ambient light. So that's where I'd have to increase now my strobe. We'll bring it up to 3, where it was. And so you can start to see that beautiful moody look. But yeah, you can cancel it all out. You don't have to have a dark room. And that's what I often find quite confusing <laughs> when I see people shooting in a dark room. But sometimes their um, output of their light might not be strong enough to, to produce the light that you want. But there's two things that I could do here now. I could lower the light, bring it closer to get more light onto my subject, or I could just turn it up. So always, you know, to have full control over your light, it's just knowing what it can do. It's understanding how your camera captures and records light. That's basically what it comes down to. Um, Lauren's got a question about shooting in a white room with white walls. Would you recommend using the black side of a V-flat to, um, to remove some of that light to create a moodier look? Like... Yeah, if you wanted to, absolutely, because black's going to suck that light away. I mean, I shoot in a white studio. My floors are pretty much white, my ceiling's white, my cupboard doors are white. So at the moment, though, with the direction of that light, it's not pointed directly at the cupboard doors, so it's not really bouncing any light in, but it does give you a beautiful sort of, you know, ambience when you walk in here because the light, the room's just full of light. Um, but yes, if you do want to create a, a, you know, a, a nice sort of warm, moody result, then definitely bring in a V-flat. If you're shooting, though, any form of light, 
in a space that has got brightly colored walls, <laughs> always be careful of color casts because they can impact your result a lot. And yeah, I, we got any other questions? Um, Sam says I here could keep that playing here. Um, if I leave a curtain open, I see shadows on my backdrop. So I close everything, but it's quite dark. So that's that whole cancelling out, I suppose. That's it. Yeah, you would you just know, have to adjust. That's the thing. What we're looking at with our eyes is not what our camera is capturing. I'm looking at that baby down there and she's so bright. I look over here at my screen and I've got a beautiful, dark, moody result. So it's all about. I suppose having faith in your camera <laughs> and, and having faith in yourself that you know what you're doing in terms of that light placement. So we'll just lower our light back down. Oops. And I'm going to bring it up a bit. Now what I'm looking at here on my screen is yes I've got a beautiful dark moody result but that image is underexposed. And the reason I know that it's underexposed is because those skin tones aren't a mid-tone. They're not 50% grey. Those skin tones are probably halfway between 50% grey and white. So they're brighter. So I have to make sure when I look at my histogram and up here on my screen, um, you know, the majority of that information is sitting in the middle. I've got to bring the brightest part, and I know that the baby's skin is the brightest part right now of this setup. I've got to bring that information up to roughly around a halfway between the middle and the white end. So I've just turned my light up to four and I've lowered it a little, brought it around a bit more. And now we can start to see those skin tones coming up, which is exactly what we want. So I don't have to do too much to the skin in post-production. But if you are underexposing your photos, whether you are using a strobe or natural light, you are going to have to really, um, you know, work the skin tones in post-production. What happens when you underexpose a newborn's skin is that you, you bring out or you increase those reds. And whether they're a cool baby with fair skin's got those cooler tones, or a baby with jaundice who's got, you know, some yellows in there, you're going to have a really hard time getting those skin tones right. So knowing where to place those skin tones on the histogram, that's going to come with experience. I teach it and getting it right in camera, but it's also, um, you're going to be able to identify when you look at a baby. So if I'm photographing a baby with beautiful dark skin, I know it's either going to be depending on you know the ethnicity of the baby, it's either going to be around that 50% grey or a little bit darker. So I don't want my exposure to be right up there unless I'm photographing darker skin on a wider background. But you've got to then be able to identify which information is which. So you can see by this histogram, the majority of that information is between 50% grey and black because they're dark browns. So they are dark tones. And the, the majority of information in this file, like when you look at how big the baby's face is in, in the arm and the leg compared to the dark wrap, the dark bowl and the dark floor, of course it's going to be less information. So you will get familiar with how to read your histogram, but it comes with experience and obviously getting to know what you're looking That's for. That's great. You've kind of answered Nancy's question there about where the skin tones actually sit within that histogram. And of course, it depends on the baby as well. Um, what else do we have here? So I have a huge window in my studio and I use the Jimbe Continuous Light. Um, how do you control natural light? This one's about strobe today, but I'm sure Kelly will give you a little, in, a little insight, not much. So if you've got large windows in your studio, I don't know why you're using a Jinbei Continuous Light because I've got beautiful large windows here in my studio. I know how to use strobe, I know how to use continuous light because I learnt with natural light. It's actually the hardest thing to photograph with because it's changing all the time. <laughs> and Garrett and I know this when we're filming because um, all of a sudden we'll have beautiful warm light and then a cloud will come across and the room goes grey. It's always so, a good example to watch one of Kelly's videos in fast forward when we're using natural <laughs> light and you'll see the light change. flicker. So, 
The thing is, yes, you're going to get a much more consistent result when you're shooting with artificial light, whether it's strobe or continuous. So with your um, natural light, those large windows, I would get some blinds, some block out blinds if you want to cancel it out. Um, I used to use at home lots of sheer curtains and depending on how much you want to diffuse that light, if you get direct light, as in the sun shines through that window, you're going to want to use something to, to block that out because direct light's not great. But if you're just getting, you know, a light, soft light coming through there, then putting some sheer curtains on it would look beautiful. I used to actually have to block a lot of my light out at home in my old studio. So I basically would put the, the sheer curtains on till you couldn't fit anymore. <laughs> so it would create a nice thick layer of curtaining in front of it and it, it, it was softer. And that's how you produce that soft light. Um, but yeah, if you want to cancel out that those windows, then I would either get some V-flats like this, get some block out blinds, um, get some curtains, block out curtains. They're, you know, they're not terribly expensive. And then you can focus on that gym bay. Um, but yeah, maybe, I mean, without seeing your studio, it would be really hard to tell. So yeah, but that's one thing we're actually really excited about. What we're planning to do as we move forward, um, <laughs> you said those words again, move forward. <laughs> Garrett counts how many times I say that a day. Um, we're actually going to be doing studio reviews. So we're going to do sort of virtual tours of people's studios and help them, you know, really sort of define their space and set it up so that it functions for them in terms of, you know, their lighting, the, the way that you create, um, you know, a, a workable space, even in very, very small spaces, so that you can still achieve really great results. Because, I mean, I'm lucky. I've, I've got a beautiful big studio. But when I first started out, my studio space was very small. It was literally two metres wide by three metres long. And I, I had families coming in there, so I had very little space. But that's what you've got to do. You've got to learn to work with what you've got. So we're really looking forward to that. I've got another one here, and it'll be another live, I'm sure, about lighting that we do. But um, using a light like that when you're using a bean bag, like getting it in the right place, it's... Depends on how big your bean bag is. Yeah. So if I'm shooting with my, you know, my big round stand, it sits quite high. So I've got to get that light up. Um, and that's where, you know, with a ceiling that's low, it's going to make it really hard, depending on the size of your modifier. Um, I do love a big modifier because the bigger the modifier, the softer the light. And I want beautiful, soft light. But that's why I love natural light too, because I love being able to diffuse that and create beautiful results with natural light too. So it's just, light is light. You just have to learn how to control it and how to direct it and put it where you want it. But understand your modifiers um, and, and how you can obviously do that and achieve the good results. So yeah, if I've got a big tall posing bag or if you're working with the posing tables that are higher off the ground, then you're going to want to have to get that light up nice and high. But yeah, ceilings will impact you so you might have to angle it down and then just turn it and feather it a little further away so that you are directing it in front of the baby if it's on the posing bag um, instead of behind it as well. But one problem I always see with the posing bag is they have that light pushed right up against the side and the side of the baby is lit. Don't light the side of the baby. We're not trying to achieve split lighting. Light the front of the baby. Draw your eye to the baby's face, not behind it. I'm, like, I'm really passionate about that. You are really passionate about that. Anyway, I'm going to go enjoy the rest of your week. I hope you're all doing great. And all of my friends in the UK, I hope you've had a great week back shooting in your studios. I know you may have felt a little rusty at times, um, but stick with it. You'll be back feeling better than ever uh, very soon. So I hope it's all working out for you. Take care, guys. Bye.